In tonight's special report, Colorado Springs always makes the list. Best places to raise a family, best cities to live. But behind the family-friendly reputation is a dark secret. Sex trafficking is alive and well here in southern Colorado. I trusted someone who I thought was my friend that literally led me to one of the most horrible and hard times of my life. Aubrey Lloyd was just 16, still in high school working a part-time job at 7-Eleven. That's where she became friends with another teenage girl. She just kind of befriended me, you know, I really like the way you have your hair done today, oh thanks, and she would just come in real frequently and we just became friends. Unhappy at home, Aubrey took her new friend up on what sounded like a good offer. She's like, just come live with me and my mom. You know, you can go to school, you know, it's quiet here, you can do your homework, you don't have to worry about things. And it made sense to me, and I thought she was my friend. Turns out her friend's mother's boyfriend ran an escort service. I should have immediately left, but I had just ran from something, you know, and then to go home at this point just didn't feel like an option to me. He casually asked her to join. Aubrey declined and thought that was the end of it. So we went to a party that night I was drugged, and that night I was sexually assaulted. He said, I hope that's your last time you ever tell me no. And it was the last time she said no for six long months. Our identity is completely stripped from us. You know, so every day I was given a new name, a new age, a new backstory. People that didn't comply got seriously injured. There were girls that disappeared, you know, that talked back, that tried to run. At 16, Aubrey was one of the older girls. There were others as young as 12 years old, isolated, moving from house to house to avoid suspicion. Her future seemed hopeless until one night a drug dealer inside their circle grew a conscience. He told me if I didn't leave that night that he would tell me that he would tell um, the pimp Dante that I was the snitch. And I was like, you can't say that. Like, that's my life in jeopardy. Um, he's like, I just don't feel like you're supposed to be here and you need to leave. Aubrey was finally free, but her traumatic ordeal was far from over. It took years before she learned this. It didn't just happen to me, and it wasn't my fault, and I'm not a bad person, and I can do amazing things and have an amazing life. And what happened to me doesn't have to define all of who I am. Sadly, the awareness came too late to save her little sister, who also came under the control of a pimp after falling for a boy at the skating rink. He convinced her to run away, and he was a pimp, and he actually sold her all across the country. So he took her out of Colorado, we tracked her down to Louisiana, down through Texas, and we finally found her in Portland. And when I first went to go get her, I drove right past her. That's how much trafficking took from her. I didn't recognize my little sister. Aubrey's sister never did overcome her past, instead took her own life at 16 years old. In that moment, I realized this can't be our whole life. Everything that had happened to me, and then now I lost my sister, there has to be more to life. Aubrey went to college, earned a master's degree, and now helps other victims on their road to recovery. Aubrey's story is more common than one might think. In the time that we've been aware of it, we've um, been fairly inundated. Undercover officers say sex trafficking has largely left the streets and moved online. In Colorado Springs postings on Backpage alone, we're seeing 50 to 100 posts each day. Springs police are learning an alarming percentage of the girls on Backpage aren't truly there by choice. Dozens of CSPD officers participated in an in-depth training, learning how to spot the signs and help the victims. It gives me a great sense of hope for these girls at um, a sense that we are making a difference out there. We are making a positive change for some of these people. One of the biggest obstacles convincing the public these crimes happen here. Victims and their oppressors hiding in plain sight. These horrible things happened here in Colorado Springs. They didn't happen in a bigger city. You know, they happened here in this beautiful community we live in. So a couple signs to look out for girls who are not in charge of their own money or IDs or girls in the company of older men who are not related to them. If you suspect someone is being trafficked, call Crime Stoppers at 634-STOP. Or to learn more about this issue, you can attend a Colorado Springs Human Trafficking Task Force meeting. They meet the second Tuesday of every month at the First United Methodist Church on North Nevada at 530 p.m. Joe.